Uh, we get a bus, we load up the bus with all of the students, all of their uh, possessions and any kinds of equipment that we're taking to the field and then we're off to the village of Silango. Uh, and it can take a bus ride uh, depending on how things are going four to five hours. Montubia, desde Cerro Colorado, viene levantando el polvo con su tremendo tumbao. Con giro, con con giro, con giro, con giro, con giro, con con giro, con giro, con giro, con con giro, con con I imagine that for many of the students it's a fairly confusing experience, uh, but a good one because it really, you know, sets in motion the fact that they're in a, another country, another culture. We usually head straight toward the coast to the Santa Elena Peninsula. Uh, so what that means is we're cutting across a very, very dry uh, zone of Ecuador to start with, um, semi-desert, crisscrossed by pockets of, of pretty lush agricultural activity if there's a river or water source. So it'll be a fairly desertified environment until we get to the coast and then suddenly the vista opens up to this you know, fantastic view of the Pacific Ocean. And then we're heading north uh, up along the coast uh, until we get uh, to Salango. We've been doing this program now for 15 years and we are at this point essentially part of their annual calendar. You know, you know, there's Christmas and New Year's and there's Easter and there's the arrival of the field program. And it's something that's anticipated. Uh, the people of the village know that we're coming. We have a lot of friends. A lot of the people in the village look forward to the students coming uh, because it's a diversion. It's entertaining to them because they have a new set of people to interact with. And the people who have businesses, small shops, restaurants, uh, fishermen, etc., they look forward as well to the influx of this group because, because we add to the economy. I knew automatically that if I went to FAU towards the end before I graduated, I was going to do the field school. I really wanted a school that focused on anthropology and um, actual methods, so that's why I actually chose FAU. My first semester at FAU as a freshman, I took Intro to Anthropology with uh, Valentina. She introduced me to the field school my, like, during class and showed a video. Most people were freshmen, but kind of always knew I wanted to go. If a student had taken a previous class with me in archaeology in particular, then I can tell right away, you know, once I see his, his or her grades and performance in the class and uh, even how much he likes the, the topic, that this student might be a good candidate. The students, sometimes even regardless of their GPA, become a good students in the field. As a freshman, uh, in my first semester, I took Introduction to Anthropology with uh, Valentina. And uh, I was really interested. I, I never thought I would go, but then eventually I saved up a little money and then I decided to go to come here. I found out when I took Intro to Anthropology with Valentina Martinez. That was my first semester. When I really decided to go on this trip, 
was when I took biological anthropology and it sealed the deal. She saw me and Alex and she's like, you two gotta go. And it just kind of went from just talking about it to really like, hey, I got this paperwork done, what about you? And then it just built and then it's, we're here now. I just want to do a few introductions and then I'm going to look at this to talk about. And this guy here is Jaime. Jaime, he's, he's coordinating, you know, out the field school. So any need that you have that is about is the market with the banyas and something great, you need something, you ask Jaime. Any security issues, you ask Jaime. Ah, Patricio! This is Patricio, this is our guard. He's always alert, as you can see. <laughs> and uh, he will take us to the cabana. Adam, are you already have some special bonding? Yeah, that's that's or, great. Yeah, okay. Nice okay. So, Patricia, <laughs> give a los tres señores a esta cabana de aquí adelante. I need three girls. Three uh, girls that have already yeah. bonded. Okay. The research center over the years has really become very, what I think of as comfortable. Uh, with bathrooms and, and hot water showers, um, good food. So we've, we've basically solved the, the kinds of issues that most Americans find to be the most important. We're here, you know, a couple miles away from home, you know, but... Top one, I'm on top of my shit. Oh, sweet. Is that a car show? The compound, I think, is really nice. It's, um, it feels like I'm just going camping. It, it's more than my expectations, that's for sure. I like that it's on the beach. It's not high tech, but I didn't expect that. It's amazing. It's, it's much more than I was expecting. I was expecting everything we needed, but we got that, plus everything we wanted to. So it's an amazing place, amazing. I was pretty impressed by it. I didn't think it would be this large. I thought it was going to be smaller. I didn't know it was walled either. I thought it was just like out, out in the open. I'm really just looking forward to getting in the field and actually doing hands-on work and getting that experience. Just going out into the field and, and trying out you know, actually using archaeological methods. You know, you sit in class and you hear about them, but it's not the same when you actually do them yourself. Seeing what the field's like, I'm really excited to see what we're going to be doing over there. The students that come to the field school, uh, they have never had any uh, previous experience uh, in field archaeology. And so we have designed the program in such a way that the main goal is to teach students the basic field techniques. That means how to collect data in the field. Remember that archaeologists, uh, our information is buried underground. So the students have to learn from the process of entering a, a, a region, trying to uh, find out where the sites are located, trying to find a pattern as to why sites are located in specific locations, and then is it to teach them the process of uh, opening an area for excavation, setting down or laying down uh, the, our ex unit of excavations, and then after that, to excavate with a trowel, with a shovel, and collect, you know, all of these pieces of information. Yeah, 
probably that. Yeah, they were. What do you say? That's what I said. And you know what? Well, you know. Yeah. 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 Yeah
the living conditions of the people of Salango are not so poverty stricken that it looks like people are miserable. In fact, people look happy, they're friendly, they're relaxed, uh, there doesn't seem to be a lot of stress uh, in the village. So people live in the way that they live um, with a great deal of satisfaction. So I think that students note that. They don't, I think, feel that they're living in some kind of poverty stricken situation, but they do notice that there are definite economic differences between the way that they live in the United States and the way that people along the coast of Ecuador in a small fishing village live. Students uh, become very 
uh, very comfortable and adapted to to moving about the village and are moving uh, really moving up and down the coast. Uh, when they first come, I think they feel that they they have to insulate themselves from from the rest of uh, Ecuadorian society, and it's because they're unfamiliar with it. Many of them don't speak the language, and it is, after all, all foreign to them. But over over the weeks, what they're doing is is interacting with people, uh, uh, moving through the village, moving up and down the coast, so that they become very comfortable and adept at basically, you know, moving around the village, interacting with people, moving up and down the coast, and uh, in the way that they want. So I think that students definitely make a, a very strong transition. Really, what I've learned is about the people themselves more so than the actual archaeology. Um, and I've learned that of uh, how fortunate you know we are to have what we have in you know America and the states um, compared to here. I mean, it's not bad here, but there's definitely a lot of room for improvement. You know. I think it's that like this is such a small a small fishing town, and but like the archaeology seems so important to everyone. And when you talk to people around here and you tell them that you're like from Salango, they know exactly why you're there and they, they're really interested in the archaeology. The people here are a lot nicer. Like when you drive on the road, everybody honks at each other to like tell them if the car is coming or not. And in America, nobody really cares. They just cut each other off or whatever. So I mean, everybody here is a lot nicer. The, I think the most common expression here is mañana, tomorrow. But tomorrow says like absolutely nothing. You know, it can be tomorrow, or it can be in two weeks. It's, the people are really laid back. You, know, you, have to, you have to get accustomed to that. You know, in, in Germany, if you say, okay, let's meet at nine, everybody's there a quarter before nine. So if you hear, see, let's meet at nine, the first comes at 10. <laughs> and the last probably two days later. <laughs> so, but once you get used to that, people are really friendly, open-minded, and yeah. I really love it. I don't catch everything that they say, but I like how all the younger kids that we talk to here feel the same way that we do about everything, like, you know, like protecting the earth and we're all the same people and, you know, just deep thoughts are the same. But living on the beach is really fun for me because I only get to go to the beach like every couple of years. <laughs> um, and then the, I really do like the field work. The field work is really fun. That's what I love to do. So being able to spend my summer doing that is really fun and totally worth it for me. The personal like liberty that people have and uh, that I've noticed with with, with like dancing, it's a, a particular thing and uh, maybe in the rest of Latin America, I don't know, but here in Ecuador I've noticed everywhere from Salango to Cuenca, uh, dancing is like a recurring thing that like you're free to do that. That's a number one way to express yourself and everyone's doing that, everyone's happy when they're doing that. And that's something you don't see in the United States. You have, uh, I feel like everyone's embarrassed or something to dance. Well, where I live, uh, you know, there's a, there are a lot of Hispanics and, and Latin Americans. So I, I could see a lot of, uh, a lot of certain traditions or certain aspects of where, I, you know, I, where I live, especially like the driving. I could see why people drive the way they do in Miami comparison to a lot of these South American and Central American countries I've been to. And it makes me understand why, you know, we're the worst drivers. As a Spanish speaker, it's uh, it's kind of different because in the States when I speak broken Spanish, I don't, no one really cares, but here people kind of, you know, they'll slightly make fun of me a little bit. That I'm not used to, but um, overall it's just different. It's just a different, totally different way of life here. I like it. The four day weekend I went to Quito, which is the capital and it's just your typical large city. And there, it's, it reminds me of being back home. You know, can't really trust the people as much as you can. You know, you have to be careful about taxis, getting in which type of cars, where you go at night. And then being here in like coastal Ecuador, like a really small area, there's no security, no cops, no anything. But I feel a hundred times safer than I would in, you know, Quito or Guayaquil. Uh, the students, uh, uh, when they finish the field school, they have an incredible sense of accomplishment. I think it's the first time in which uh, uh, you know, professors push them and encourage them 
to complete uh, a specific piece of work from beginning to end. And we, we push them to even go beyond that because we even suggest, you know, well, when you're writing about uh, this report and the region, try also to tell us, based on your experience, what can we do next year? Also, you know, it's the part of, you know, the adventure. Some of them, is, I think, is the first time that they experience to be in, a, in what is considered a third world country. And uh, it, they feel like, you know, they're in the middle of a rural area where maybe not too many people speak their language. They don't have access to air conditioning or, you know, a vending machine. And uh, so that means that they, they, are, they have to survive with the elements that we're giving them and the elements that they find around. And then obviously at the academic level, some of them discover uh, the passion for anthropology, uh, for archeology span in particular. And uh, they, it's something that they would like to pursue. Uh, we have, a, we have a produced, a, a, some of my, our students have gone to, to, to uh, graduate school PhD and master's degree and they have a finished. Maybe we should tell that to Governor Scott. <laughs> and they have found, you know, uh, jobs uh, in not, not only in academia, but, you know, uh, other aspects of the program, of the, of the field. From the academic standpoint, students get real experience, the kind of real experience that they can use to further their own careers and to further their own ideas about what they want to do in their lives. Now beyond that sort of anthropological academic experience, it seems to me that many of our students have, uh, have a really meaningful life experience. And that meaningful life experience is, is basically, it's their first opportunity to really experience another culture and to stay in one place and experience, experience that culture over a fairly long period of time. It's very different from a touristic experience where you drop in for a couple of days. And it's very different from the kind of academic experience where students travel from city to city or museum to museum and just experience culture in small snippets in many different places. This is in-depth experience about what an area is like. I learned a lot. I really did. I learned I learned how to excavate, the importance of excavation, the importance of collecting data. You can only do so much in a classroom setting, but to actually be out here um, doing a real thing is actually a good experience and I know what to expect now when I go into it in the future. It's great, you know, uh, for my first time I, I participated in a practical archaeological project and yeah, I think it's a, the base whatever archaeological work I'm going to do in the future. I'm going to remember that this is kind of where it all started. This was my first experience in the field and I was fortunate enough to be in a foreign country that's just beautiful. Well, yeah, I've done field work wherever in the western U.S., but I've also been to Ecuador. I've done field work down there. And I think just having that entire experience is, I'll never, never forget that. <laughs> Not every, everyone's going to pursue being an archaeologist, but I know that I learned um, unique things because of the fact that we're all here initially for archaeology, but we might leave with different uh, ideas in mind. I think keeping an open mind, being open to any experiences, staying positive about field work is really important. Uh, I got a tattoo. <laughs> I don't think I had a closed mind before, but it gives you a little bit of an open mind. Living in a, in a village like this, it's not used to, you know, it's not like a place we would live, our streets are paved, we don't, you know, certain, certain little things that you take for granted uh, while you live in the States and then you come to certain areas that don't have uh, certain luxuries. So you grow an appreciation for those small things that people take for, you know, that you tend to take for granted. Yeah, I think this should be mandatory for every college graduate period is going to a different country to uh, get a sense of what it's like not in America because we do live in a bubble. It's been a lot more apparent that there's a really big world out there, a lot of small places that are barely on the map and people need to go there and experience you know, the smaller places in life to be able to appreciate everything in total. I will be back. I will be back, Ecuador. You are your experience in every sense of the word.